Hey guys, it's Melanie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this zippered pouch. And this tutorial is part of the DIY wedding collaboration with my friends over at Kin Community. And so you can check out the thumbnails at the end of this video. And there are some really great projects that I think you'll have a really fun time watching. So be sure to check those out. And I'm going to make this zippered pouch and it's boxed out on the bottom so it stands up. And I filled it with like the wedding day essentials. So breath mints, Kleenex, a Tide stick, some aspirin, things like that. And so this would be a great bridesmaids gift or a bride gift, mother of the bride gift. And then it's also a great pattern to know how to make for the future. So it's a really simple pattern and you can change the fabric and make it for a birthday gift or a Christmas gift later on. So let's get going. I'm going to show you how I made it. Okay, you will need some scissors, a rotary cutter to cut your fabric, an erasable pen, water soluble pen, a fabric, your lining fabric and fleece, fusible fleece, a small ruler, a nine inch zipper. I like to use clover clips and pins, um, but one or the other is fine. And then also some embellishments to make your zip pouch look more bridal or really whatever kind of theme you're going for. You also need a coordinating thread. So now what we want to do is cut our fabric and you're going to be cutting it 10 and a half by eight inches. And we need two pieces of your outside fabric, two pieces of your lining, two pieces of the fusible fleece. Now what we're going to do is take that small ruler and we're going to measure a one and a half inch square and using that pen, make a mark. So you can see here, then you want to cut it out using your scissors and you're going to be doing this on all six of those pieces. So here it is nice and close, one and a half inches, and this is going to be for the boxed out bottom. So you want to make a mark and then cut that little square out of your outside pieces, your lining pieces and the fusible fleece. Now here's another pouch that I made and I'm showing you here where I added this ribbon. You can use this kind of vinyl and a ribbon um, and make a pouch, but I just want to show you kind of how to measure it. So you want to measure it one, two, three and a quarter inches down from the top of your fabric. And you want to make sure it's the same on both sides, three and a quarter down, and then pin your ribbon into place and make sure that it's nice and secure. You can use more pins than I did if you want to. And then take it over to your sewing machine and you are going to sew this down. I'm using a walking foot just to make sure that nothing gets too bunched or that the ribbon moves around. And I'm going to sew it really close to that edge, as close as I can possibly get. So you can see here, you want to cut your ribbon a little bit wider than your fabric because it might shift just so slightly that you might want to do that just to be safe. You can see right there on the edge, do this on both sides of the ribbon and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that we have our front panel embellished with however you would like to embellish it, we are going to attach our fusible fleece. Make sure that the glue side of the fleece is attached to the wrong side of the fabric. And then once your iron is nice and hot, you're going to sort of just hold it down following the manufacturer's instructions, whatever kind of fusible fleece you have purchased and make sure that it's nice and secure onto that outside piece of fabric. And then we're going to do it again with the other side. This is the glue side facing up and the wrong side of our fabric facing down so that you adhere it properly and don't make a mess on your iron. You can use a pressing cloth if you need to, but if your cuts are pretty accurate so that you don't have any of the glue coming up, that will be the best option. Now here we wanna place our zipper teeth side down so that zipper pull should be facing down on the right side of our outer fabric. And then we're gonna place our lining fabric right side facing down so that those right sides are together and make a little zipper sandwich here. I like to use the clover clips because it's a little bit easier to be taking them on and off and you want to clip that all the way down. Start sewing your zipper underneath that, that zipper pull so that it's not in your way and then go all the way to the end and then you're going to go up and move that zipper pull down so that it's not in your way. Uh, you won't be able to get your zipper foot around it so that's kind of why you want to mess with the position of the zipper pull when you are attaching your zipper. So I'm going to show you again on the other side. So you want to have your right side facing up. Take that zipper teeth side down onto your other side of your right side of your fabric. So here's, there's the teeth down, right side down on that lining fabric, and then go ahead and sew it down. 
This is just the regular foot on my sewing machine. You can use a zipper foot if you like. Removing the pins as you go, and then you can see here, I'm gonna come up on that zipper pull. So just back stitch a little bit, take it off, and then move that zipper pull down so that then you can have a nice clean, la like a clean edge on that zipper pouch. Give it a nice good press over at your ironing board and then we're going to top stitch it. Don't forget to iron the underside of it as well so that nothing's sponged under there. Then I'm gonna be using my walking foot this time and I'm gonna to top stitch the top side of the zipper. You can see it gives it a nice finished look. Using a walking foot when you are sewing many layers of fabric together is really helpful if you have a walking foot. If you don't, I really do suggest you investing in one. And you can see um, the top stitching looks so nice, about an eighth of an inch away from that zipper tape. Now what we wanna do is open our zipper a little bit more than halfway, and now we are gonna be sewing up the bag portion. So take the outside pieces of fabric, place them right sides together, so here we are putting the lining right sides together and then our zipper tape, see that right there, you want that facing your lining. So you want your zipper teeth and your zipper tape going toward the lining of your bag. And then you can put a clover clip or a pin in there and attach everything nice all the way around. Here's where our hole is gonna be. It's gonna be on the side of the bag. So I put those two little marks there so you can see about how big it's gonna be. And then we're gonna sew a 5 8 seam allowance going all of the way around the bag. When you go over the zipper, be sure that your needle isn't gonna go down on any of those metal teeth. You don't wanna be breaking any needles. So just feel with your finger and make sure you're just outside of that. You want to make sure that any of your embellishments are trimmed, and then you're gonna go all the way down. You can backstitch slightly at those openings. Um, we're gonna be finishing that up here in a minute, but just go ahead and um, slight backstitch, and then 5 8 going all of the way around the bag. See here I can kind of feel with my finger where that metal piece is gonna be and we're gonna just make sure we're not hitting that with our needle. Um, so just be real careful about that, but you want it to be nice and close so that there's no gaps in your zipper. So go all the way around. We're gonna go all the way down around to this edge with a slight back stitch, and then all the way along the bottom and back up to where the hole was on the side of our bag. Okay, here we are back at the beginning. You can see I left that big gap there and backstitch well so that it's nice and secure for when we flip our bag out. There we go. Now what we wanna do is make our box um, bottom. Okay, so, and here I am just showing you sort of again where you're gonna be stitching. So you wanna go all the way around, all the way to those ends. Okay, now here we make our box. So you want to put those side seam and the bottom seam together. See where those seams are matching up? And put the side seam going one direction and the bottom seam going the opposite direction. Nest those seams together. Place a pin in there. And I put a couple of other pins on the sides too just to make sure everything stayed nice and secure. And we're gonna do that all around on all four sides. So you wanna make sure that that side, zip, that side seam and the bottom seam are going the same direction for the sides of the, for the bags. Um, that will make a little bit more sense when you do it, but then you're just going to stitch a quarter of an inch from your edge, back stitching on both sides. Here I am on the lining bit. So here we go, we are done with that part. We are so close to the end here. So open up that side seam, that side opening and pull the bag through right side out. And you wanna just stick your finger down in any of those seams, pop out any of those seams like right here, make sure everything looks nice and neat and nice and tidy all the way around. And then you wanna make sure that you pop the zipper out on the side, you can see that like the zipper pull, make sure all of that is nice and straight as well. And then we want to close up our big hole that's in our lining. So with your coordinating thread, just go along, back stitch, and close up that hole. So once you are done doing this, go ahead and place your lining inside your bag, and it's gonna be done. Make sure that the zipper is working. Um, close it all up and give it a, a good test run there. Make sure everything looks right. 
And then if you want to, you can go take it over to your ironing board and give it a good press. After kind of flipping it out, right side out, it can kind of get a little bit wrinkled. And then there's the bag. If you want to add any other embellishments, you can at this point. This one just had a pin right on there, so I just used that. You can use hot glue. If there's anything else, you would maybe want to do that before you sew the bag together. But this is how it looks. And here's some other options of ones that I made as well. And I hope you enjoy this project. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. That's a great way to show your support and that you liked this video. Also, be sure to check out my friends' videos. Everything will be linked at the end of the video. There's some really great ones. And um, also, if you make projects, tag me on social. I love, love, love to see what you guys make. My Facebook page, Instagram page. You know, there's lots of places that you can find me. So I love to see what you guys are working on. I hope that this inspired you to make something really fun, either for your wedding or just for your friend or a birthday present, Christmas uh, coming up later this year. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video. Bye.